Hi, Rich Spisano here from Digitally Fearless, and today I'm going to show you a very easy way to create this poster of the four elements. And if you stick around till the end, I'll even show you how to enhance it with this particular poster right here, which I think looks much better. So let's get started. So I did File, New, and I chose Letter under the Print thing, so it's 8.5 by 11. I'm going to just cancel that because I have it opened already. And I pulled in four photos with the four elements I chose. So one is a forest scene, uh, one is a sky, one is water, and one is fire. So we're going to work with these one at a time. So the first thing I think that I will start on is water. So let's bring water in. And I'm going to do Control or Command minus pull myself way out to see where it is and I'm going to ungroup these right now I usually keep you know what I'm going to actually duplicate control command J those are my original photos below and I'll hide them and then I will ungroup this so I can work on them one at a time so here's the water and it has to be larger than the actual document but it doesn't have to be this large so I might want to just pick some spots that I think look good and have showing the waves and I'm going to shrink it down to maybe there so I could see some of these waves like that and that looks pretty good so the first thing I'm going to do is filter distort rectangular to pole and let's get a close-up so it's rectangle to polar I'm holding my spacebar down, just moving this here. And what it does is it fills my whole document. Well, I don't want to fill my whole document. So I have my transform opened. If you don't see a transform, you go to View, Studio, and Transform. And in my transform, I had it set for inches up on top here. So all I need to do is I'm going 3.7 by 3.7. And that's what I have there. And notice that I did not have this connected. If you, if you click it, then if you did 3.7, it'll stay in proportion. I did not want it in proportion. I wanted it to be a perfect square. So now I will get closer. And I don't want, I want to make sure, I don't like this seam. And I've tried several different ways. And I just think the best is a smudge tool in this particular case. But before I do a smudge tool, I don't want to ever come outside of this square by accident. So I'm going to command click on the icon, which makes a selection. So I anything painting outside will not happen. And then I get my smudge tool and you pick your flow and your strength. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm going to just lower my flow and see how it works. And with my left and right brackets, I can just decide. And I'm just going to kind of pull back and forth a little just to let it blend in a little bit like that. See like that? It's not a perfect blend. I tried in, in painting tool. It did not work in this case. But it doesn't have to be perfect for this situation because it's just going to be a background anyway. And I think that's good. And then I'm going to deselect Controller Command D. And I'm going to put lettering in here. And since I'm going to put lettering, I think what I'll do is I'll hold shift and rotate it this way. So the lettering kind of covers up some of that too. And you need to keep these originals because I'll show you why later. Next one I'm going to do is fire. So let's open up the fire and go out again. And we can hide this in the meantime. So here we have the fire. And you need to pick, again, a spot that you think looks good with the fire. Like, I say something like that. I think that works. And then filter, distort, rectangle to polar. I take this, and I'm using 3.7 because I figured that's going to work on my page, my poster later on. So I'm doing 3.7 by 3.7 because I want it to be square. And... Control or Command click on this icon in the layer to select it so I don't end up smudging outside that square. And just start playing a little bit. And I'm using a mouse, so it's, again, it's not as good with a mouse, but many of you, especially for a beginner's tutorial, don't have tablets, so I tend to work with a mouse so that you can see that a mouse works. 
And I think that's pretty close. Deselect. And once again, I'm just going to rotate it. I don't have, I could rotate it any way, what I think looks best. I'm going to go this way this time. I think, I think that way. Okay. So that's good. We'll close that one up. We're going to pull out again. That was Control Command minus. Let's do the next one. This is Sky. And so now we have four boxes. And so let's go to the whole page. Water, then fire, earth, and then air. We're going to do layer, new fill layer. And since this is already black, you can change it to black. Uh, I'll just put a new fill layer behind it so it stands out. And I'm going to be doing some effects on these. So again, stick around. I'd like to get this one these two lower, these two there, and we want to have about the same spacing. So I'm not going to get that technical. I'm going to be using my eyes for this mostly. And I also want to give them outlines. We'll do effects, outline, and we'll change the outline to white. And let's decide how big we want this outline. We're just moving the radius up. And I'm thinking, it looks like a, let's do 4.5. That looks pretty good. I could do one on each, or I could do, I could select that and say edit, copy. Then I select the other three and do edit, paste, style. And there you go. And so they all have an outline. I'm not crazy about this white. So what I might do is go to adjustments and recolor. And maybe give it a little more of a of a blue. I don't want too much blue because we want the sky. We want it to be more of a sky blue. And even this one, I think maybe that blue I would like a little bit better. So I'm going to do adjustments. This time I'll do HSL and lighten it up a little bit. Give it a little more saturation like that. And I think that looks nice. And now we have to put labels on them. And then we'll do the title on top. So I'm going to start with water here. So let's just turn. The reason I'm starting with water is it has the most letters in it. And I want to keep my lettering in the center somehow. So I'm going to pick a fairly thick font. So first I'm just going to type all caps water. And I want my font. Because we're going to clip the font, I want that to be Arial Black, because Arial Black is a nice, thick font. And I want this to be centered. And I'm going to do the same for each, and then I'm going to clip those to the, uh, these backgrounds on the original. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So we have water. And maybe I'll move those all to the top. And next one is, let's do fire. So I'm going to copy, control command J, move it here to the center, and then type fire. And the reason I centered up on top, the lettering right here, center justified, is when I type fire, it's in the center. So the next trick is to clip something to it. So here's the water. And I'm going to go find my water. This is my original photo. I am going to bring this to the top first. And find a good spot with a lot of water in it. Let's say maybe like that. And then I'm going to take the water, the lettering of the water, and push it right on top of the icon and let go. And what that does, and I'm going to get a close-up, it turns the lettering to a mask, and all you see is that background. Now, one problem with that is, remember I, I changed the watercolor? So I need to, 
copy that and paste that. So, so I added that blue and I have to put that onto here too. So now that water is the same color. So now when I take that group, I can go to effects and I could do an outline and I can do a bevel and emboss. And I think I'll just make it an emboss. I think the outline might be a little bit big. I'm not sure. Let's see. And I might even give it an outer glow. Let's try an outer glow. And with that outer glow, I think I'll make that outer glow in one of, into a bright, one of these brighter blues, like something like that. And so now if I raise the outer glow, it gives that glow like that. And I kind of like that. That's pretty good. Now we're going to do the same with the others. We could do air. Let's try air first. So here I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this air right to top again. I'll find a good spot where the air is. Let's go back up. I'm just going to make the air a little bit darker, I think, this time, like that. And then here's my air. I am going to take this, which the air is down here. Let me give you a close-up and see what happens now. I'm going to take that air and put it right on the icon. And then there it is. That's the air behind it. And so what I can do now is I think I will take this and say copy, control command C, and then I'm going to take the air and say edit, paste effects. And the problem with this air is that we pasted the effects, but the color is wrong because we used the color from the water. So what I'll do now is I am going to pick one of these lighter grays. And I think that works pretty good. Let's pull these together. So let's take all of this together, just so we know what we have, and do Control Command G. And we're going to call that water. And then take all of this, Control Command G, and we're call calling that fire. And then this group, this whole thing, we're going to group it, Control Command G to group it. We're going to call that earth. In case we ever want to come back to it and change some things. And then this one, Control Command G, and we'll call that air. That just cleans up all our layers, makes it very nice. And then this is our background fill. Original photos are no longer there. We just delete that layer. And then I want this to be black and white again. So I'll hit D. D brings you back to a black and white. And with lettering here again, I have to change it. I need Arial Black, but I'm going to just type four elements. And we're going to make that white. And we're going to make that Arial Black. And I would say we want these to snap to the edges there and maybe a little higher up. Actually, I think I even want these down a little more and maybe this a little bigger. And there's your four elements posters. Okay, so now if you stay this long, you wanna see how to enhance it. And I think you'll find this very simple because a lot of it is the same. So I'm just going to take one of these, which is um, the one photo here. I'm gonna bring it to the front. So that was Earth. So let's take Earth, and what I'll do is just like before, I'm going to do, oh, I need to duplicate it. Very important, I duplicate it, Control-Command-J. And now I'm going to do Filter, Distort, Rectangle to Polar, which is what we did before. Let's get a close-up. And then we're going to change that. Make sure your transform is still out. I chose 3.7. You can put any numbers you want as long as they're even. Let's hide that one. So that, whoops, sorry. And let's hide that one. So now this is what we have. And that's what we did before. And then we took, of course, the smudge and we did this to fix it. And I'm not gonna even worry about any of that now. I just wanna show you how to enhance it. The difference here is we had all this stuff on the outside and I don't really like that as much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take ellipse tool and let's lock this one in so we don't, this one doesn't move. And I'm gonna take the shape ellipse tool and with holding shift, 
I am going to just make an ellipse. Now I don't I want to just make sure now always holding shift maybe just a little bit less than the outer part of that so so some of the outside shows and what we do now is with that ellipse you control or command click on the ellipse icon and that makes a selection and then we can hide that and then on the one under it which is this piece you just created you do control or command J and deselect. So what that actually did was just copy the circle. And that's what we want. So now the next thing I want you to do is take the actual image. I'm going to duplicate this again and let's bring that under the circle here. So what we want to do now is bring the image in because this is the square we're going to end up in. So let's bring the image in so we see a lot of the forest. So as long as it's rasterized, we can bring it in as far as close or as far as we want. So I'm going to go something maybe like that. And let's hide the original there. And I'm going to get a close up now. And now if you control or command click on the square one and then go to this, one the big picture underneath make sure it's rasterized so I click and say rasterize and then do control J and if we hide everything except for the circle we created and the little square that we created that's these two the rest of them we don't need so now we could take that circle which I think is a little bit big let's deselect here take that circle hold shift and command and shrink it to wherever we want to shrink it. So now what we're saying here is, if, and you can turn it like that any way you want, but now it looks more like a forest. That's really earth. So what you end up with is something like this. And you can enhance it with levels and change colorations and all, but I think these are much better showing the earth, fire, and air. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you did, please click like and subscribe and share it so other people can learn how to do this. Thanks so much. Bye.